Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, Windows to Heaven Art. I'm Stephen Cooley, and for this video, I have been inspired lately to paint waterfalls. So we're going to try to paint a waterfall on a 12 by 12 inch canvas. So it's going to be about that size right there. Now, I do have a sketch that I'm going to be working from, and some reference material that I'm going to be looking at periodically as I'm painting. So keep that in mind as you're watching. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome back. You can notice on my canvas I have a sketch, that's because I had previously done a sketch and used graphite paper to put it onto the canvas. You can see I'm putting in some gray back there. The original idea for this painting was I wanted to have a background cascade and then a closer up, more detailed waterfall. So it'll be kind of like a, a double um, cascade waterfall. That's the plan anyway, and you can see it's looking pretty misty. That is also intentional. I wanted this painting to have some mist in it. And recently I've been online looking up waterfalls, and I was watching some films, some drone footage of waterfalls in Iceland, and I thought that was so cool. It was just so beautiful, especially with the green, uh, I don't even know if it's moss or grass, but it was just so green and there wasn't much trees. Um, so this painting won't have any trees in it, but it's going to have a lot of green in it nonetheless. But yeah, I, I've always been drawn to waterfalls. There's something about them that I think is so beautiful. I had the privilege, uh, when I was younger, I think around 15 years old, uh, to be able to go to Multnomah, Multnomah Falls in Oregon. And that also is a double cascade, but it's much larger than the one I'm going to be painting today. But yeah, waterfalls are so interesting, so beautiful. And so that was what I wanted to paint on this canvas today. You can see I'm using some shop towels to kind of scrape away excess paint that I didn't need. You can see I'm sticking in a background back there and you, you'll notice too the, uh, the vertical line kind of of unpainted canvas I have coming down in the back. That's, that's where the waterfall is going to go for the background and I'm blending it all out. And just like the name I chose for my art studio, Windows to Heaven Art, I'm always imagining and thinking about what it will be like when um, if we finally get to heaven. What will it smell like? What will it sound like? What will it look like? What will it feel like? And that's what I'm doing when I'm painting is I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm dreaming about it. And... I know there's going to be beautiful waterfalls in heaven, but when I'm doing, you know, paintings like this, these are, you know, they're, they are black and white in comparison to what it will be like. And there's no way of knowing until we're there. There's no way of understanding how beautiful it will be until we get there, until we see and hear and smell and feel it for ourselves. You notice I brought in a rock from the left, and that is hiding the base of the background waterfall. At this point, our block-in of the painting, that's when we get the entire canvas covered with paint, is complete. And you can also see canvas texture and even holes, even the, you know, the holes of the canvas behind the paint. Um, in, in the a block in here. That's because the paint is so thin. And right here, I'm starting to um, stray, I guess, from the original idea of the painting and the sketch. It's already turned out quite different. And I'm, so I'm putting in some rock shapes now. And now this is, this is where the bottom part of the waterfall is coming out. 
you can see I tried painting the base of it but then I just decided just like the other one in the background I want it to um, fall out of the painting This type of painting is super easy to do. It's a great one for beginners because um, you really don't have a lot to work with. You're basically just doing green rocks with some gray sky and then waterfall. And the waterfalls, remember, they're always going to be lighter than the train around them, especially in this type of lighting. Usually they'll be white in comparison to the landscape around them. But yeah, super easy painting. Basically all you have is green, white, and that's the main the main components. You can see here that I'm basically just exploring what the rocks will look like. And I'm putting in some shadow there around the, the waterfall to help it stand out. And to kind of push the waterfall a little bit back from the rocks around it. And I had the idea after looking at the background where the other waterfall is. You see how it kind of has a warm yellowish kind of glow to it? I wanted to, yeah, and see, I'm, I'm even adding some more back there. It gave me the idea of creating a warm light that is only hitting the top rock faces up there, um, the background and then the foreground rock there. That's why I'm putting the yellow in, because I want it to look like there is some warm light kind of shining across this little valley where this waterfall is coming through and hitting the tops while leaving the valley, you know, the rest of the valley, the inside shadowed. So that was what I was doing there. So because I strayed from the original intent of what this was going to look like through my sketch that I had put on at the beginning. Uh, it, all of this is what I call exploratory painting. Yeah, I just made up the term now, exploratory painting. But basically what it means is I am exploring the possibilities of what it should look like. And so I'm just kind of winging it and keeping what I like and changing what I don't like and that always takes longer so the benefit of having a sketch is you can usually your painting you know it, it will go quicker it will not take as long so I tried really shadowing up there you can see I removed some paint with the shop towel again and then I just decided to ditch that whole you know I guess you could call it a third layer rock face in the foreground and I'm just working on taking it out completely and then I kind of liked how it looked because it really um, capitalized on the light coming in at the top because now it looks like there is also a layer of shadow below it where the other rock used to be so we're getting so close now to a ending to our painting you can see I'm experimenting down there um, by seeing if if it would be cool to have you know another rock coming up from the side towards the bottom of the painting, but yeah, I'm just I'm exploring with it, seeing what I like. One of my favorite Bible verses is found in First Corinthians, where um, it kind of talks about what I was discussing earlier about where my inspiration comes from for these paintings. It says, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 
And then it says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So that's where this inspiration is coming from, is the spirit giving me inspiration for painting things that that come when I'm dreaming about what it will be like. If you're tempted to think that heaven is going to be dull, just remember that heaven and earth have the same designer. So all the things that you see in this life, in this on this earth that you think are so beautiful and that you love, just remember that the same one who made the earth is also the designer of heaven, only heaven is so much better. So I'm always challenged when I'm painting to to paint things that that I think are just scratching the surface of what heaven's going to be like. You can see here I'm using a larger brush with a very fine edge on it to bring in some sun rays and the paint color that I'm using to do that is um, basically a white with a little bit of yellow mixed into it and you notice too because the background is still wet when I'm sliding that paint across for the sun rays um, it's dragging a lot of the paint you know, in the background with it. So I ended on the sun ray down there where it's hitting the waterfall because I didn't want to smear the waterfall that I had painted. You can see I painted also some very strong sun rays in the background. And I, I think I dulled them up a little bit there because they were looking a little too dull, or excuse me, a little too bright. You can see I'm working on putting some sun rays in that are hitting the side of the cliff there. And I really wanted to keep the dance between shadows and light here in this painting by keeping a lot of dark towards the bottom because the sunlight I'm imagining is, is kind of spilling over the edge of this ravine and only hitting some things, mainly the top of the ravine, of course, but kind of the main sunbeam that I have in the middle of painting is shining through the ravine in such a way that it is hitting the waterfall and brightening it, you know, highlighting it right in the middle there. So that's why I'm adding some white into that certain, into that, you know, that spot there is because the sunlight is hitting it directly. And it's a good thing to note, too, that when you're doing sunbeams like this in an oil painting, you have to be careful when you're painting them because, like I mentioned, the background is kind of smudging along with them. So um, when I was doing the sunbeam that was hitting the waterfall here, if I had gone straight over the waterfall, I would have smudged it. So I had to have a break there and then carry it, um, carry the sunbeam on the other side without going straight through the waterfall because otherwise you know you'll just you'll smudge the wet paint just adding in some more sunbeams and um yeah I see we're doing one there I remember looking at the rock that I have coming out from the bottom after doing some highlights on it and thinking I didn't I, I just I couldn't get it out of my head that I didn't really like the shape of it it was too I don't know what the word is it was too the the lines were too um I, I just didn't like the shape of it so I after this point I could have been done with the painting right here but I wasn't satisfied until I changed the shape a little bit so you're going to see me changing the shape of the rock there on the left. And I'm still doing some exploratory painting with that. Which, if I had finished, then this painting video would only be 14 minutes. Again, that shows how beginner-friendly this is. And also kind of a cool effect that you might have seen me do already on the waterfall. There it is right down there. I 
I had the sunray coming into the waterfall, but then I broke up the sunray on the other side of the waterfall because the waterfall is actually dispersing the sunray into separate shafts of light. So I thought that was kind of a fun effect to do. Originally, I had the rock there kind of coming up skyward in a point shape. Uh, I liked that, but I had lost it when I was doing a lot of my changes. So I decided to have that same rock feature um, later on here coming up from the bottom and, and kind of leaning in towards the waterfall just to show uh, a different rock shape. And I found that is true when I'm painting rocks to have a lot of varying shapes. There it is right there. Yep, painting it in. Uh, that's, that's not to say that you can't paint a painting where the rock has a lot of uniform look to it. Because you do find that in nature and it's okay. But I found that it really, in terms of looking at a painting, it adds a lot of interest for your eye when you have different angles and um, different rock shapes. So that's what I'm working with now. And sometimes you just have to play around with it until you get what you like, which oils really afford you that luxury because they stay wet longer. And now that I got the rock shape that I'm looking for down there, I am doing some finishing touches on that sunray and we'll call her good. Great, so we're finished with the painting and I think the biggest thing that we can learn from this video is just a little side note on oils. Because oils are very slow drying, um, you can really take your time and be really flexible with your painting. As you saw me do quite a bit in this video, I did a lot of tweaking and changing of the painting. It ended up looking completely different from the original sketch, which I had, which is okay because we ended up with something that we liked. So if you're looking for a paint that you can be flexible with, oils are for you. Just keep in mind to keep to the fat on lean principle when you're painting with oils, which I've described in another video I did. Uh, the video, I believe, is called My First Oil Painting, so you can reference that. Also, I want to make a note here that painting goes a whole lot smoother if you have good brushes. And I recently got a Christmas present, um, a brush set here from Benisi. They're a small business, family-owned business. Um, but I just, I'm not getting paid for this, but I just want to say how much I've liked using their brushes. This is their, their brush set. I've just really noticed in the last paintings I've done using these brushes that they have made it a whole lot easier to paint with oils. Also, last thing I want to say before we wrap it up here is if you liked the music that I used in the background of this video, be sure to subscribe to my brother Aiden Cooley's channel, which is called Aiden Cooley Music. Make sure to check him out as well. And until next time, God bless you guys. We'll see you later.